Hi, and welcome to the inclusion of students with special needs, Education 605. And my name is David, and I will be your instructor for this course. Um, first of all, you don't have to access the course until Monday, May 16th, but on that day, you need to post your biography. It's a requirement for Viterbo that you make a post on that first day it has something to do with financial aid and, and whatever. But um, make sure you go in and post your student introduction on that day. So I've opened the course up a few days early so you can go in and, and give it a tour. I'm just going to make sure here I am not going over my time limit. There we go. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about the course. So it's completely online. It's asynchronous and there are seven modules. Uh, there will be discussion questions within the modules. If I have a date next to them, those are discussion questions that you need to answer. There will be other discussion questions which are optional. Uh, typically, people respond to most of the discussion questions that are optional also. And then at the end of every week, there's a summary where you can post anything you want about the content uh, for that module. And then I also typically will do a fireside chat, which is similar to this, 20 minutes long. I'll talk about that module and then what a few of you have posted. I'll expand some of the topics and then talk about the next module. So this is, this is summer. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit different. I am going to open up modules 5, 6, and 7 all together toward the end so you can kind of uh, prepare your time and, and, manage, um, and manage your time accordingly. But otherwise, I, I'm going to open it module 1, then a week later, module 2, module 3, and, and so forth. Um, be concise. So when you're doing your discussion questions, don't paste a an entire page. I mean, be concise, just like you had three to five minutes at a staff meeting to present, and that's what I want. Be concise. Be very to the point. Um, I talked about opening up the models, and uh, okay, for module six, there's a scavenger hunt activity, and that involves talking about um, your interaction with other teachers and how they use co-teaching, teach and assist, and, and mod, um, station teaching, things like that. You might be out of school by the time we get to that. If so, there's a few ways. You can either still connect up with one of your, your teachers, there's to a phone call or, or visit or something, or you can complete that um, from memory. You know, like, here's what I have seen in, the, in this classroom. If you're currently not in a school or, um, you know, you're, you're in a, yeah, working in a setting that isn't a school setting, then you're going to have to find someone that is in a school setting and to use that information to answer that, that question. So once you get to it, <clears throat> it'll make sense. Um, excuse me. So fireside chats, yes, about 20 minutes long, and they'll be very similar to this. I will update grades about once every two weeks, and... I will make a post in the announcements thread when I do that. So always check announcements when you log in. I recommend that you probably check the course at least every other day. And a lot of people will check it, you know, almost every day. But uh, just see what's new, what's been posted. But always check announcements. It'll be toward the top. So if you look and you it's week two and your, your grade hasn't been entered for something, don't worry about it. Wait until I post. Grades have been updated as of this date, then you can go in and check. Um, please share any documents that you have that you feel might benefit your students, something that you're using in your in your district. Um, I mean, that would be extremely helpful. Uh, it's a couple of things. You have the e-portfolio. So people will ask questions about this typically at the end, but it's, it's up front. You can look at it now. For every course in your reading licensure program, you're required to make an entry into your e-portfolio. When the e-portfolio is complete, when you're all done in the, in the program, then your, all your portfolios are reviewed by a reviewer, typically the department chair, to either approve your portfolio or hold it until certain changes are made. You are encouraged to complete your e-portfolio entry for 605 and to give me the link by the end of class. It does not count towards your grade. 
and it is not mandated, but you're strongly encouraged to do that. I always get people email me at the end and say, why do I have to complete this or whatever? No, you're strongly encouraged to do it. The reason the turbo does that is they don't want everybody rushing, uh, you know, uh, last week before they, they attempt to uh, exit from the program and, and to complete this portfolio. So, um, two big assignments for the class. I don't know how big, but two, two significant assignments. One is that you're going to be creating a timeline of inclusion, and you can take any topic you want. Timeline of inclusion from a technology standpoint, from an ADA standpoint, legislative standpoint, whatever you want to do. I did post one as an example. Some people have gotten really creative um, in, in ways that they've taken that on. I think one person even looked at like playgrounds over the, the years, how they've, they've evolved um, to, to be more inclusive. So... Um, you have a lot of leeway with that, and again, you'll see the example that should help you out. The Bill Porter plan is your final assignment. It's your capstone. It's through the last day of class. And once Module 5 is posted, you'll see that. That's up in Module 7. But basically, you're going to write a six to eight page narrative about Bill Porter. And I do have a link to the uh, Bill Porter video. It's about 20 minutes long. And you're going to see Bill as an adult. You're going to imagine Bill in your setting and then what you would do to prepare for him if he was a student in your school and you're responsible for um, disability awareness and helping with accommodations, helping connect Bill to outside agencies, clubs, things like that. So again, if you're in a situation where you're not teaching right now, you're going to have to um, kind of make some assumptions with this and, and create kind of a fictional environment as if you were teaching. If you're teaching in a private school, imagine that Bill's coming to your setting, um, even though he, he might not because of the accessibility issues. But just be creative with that. Make a setting that fits. If I'm a fourth grade teacher, then Bill is coming to me as a fourth grade student. If I'm you know a high school social studies teacher, then Bill's coming to me in high school. So you have a lot of flexibility in on how you on how you do that. Um, and those assignments, uh, people always email me, they really enjoy writing those. They're narrative. You're going to write it like, um, today I was uh, notified by my principal that we have a new third grade boy who moved to the district, and his name is Bill Porter, and Bill has cerebral palsy, and he'll be starting school next week, and he'll be in my classroom. So I'm excited for Bill, but I don't know a lot about cerebral palsy. Here's the steps I'm going to use to learn about CP and then here's the steps to learn about Bill and and here's I'm going to help staff and, and my students to you know, become about aware about CP and Bill and, and some of the technology, some of the other things we might use. And it's very well laid out, the steps. Where people typically lose points on this assignment is the final two steps that's identifying clubs Bill can be in, like student council, for example, or like the Lego club, something like that and listing outside agencies such as United Cerebral Palsy, Easter Seals, things like that, but they leave those out. Um, email me if you have any questions, and if I'm not responding and it's urgent, text me, and, and I will make sure to get back to you right away. There's a book for this class. It is posted in the, um, within Moodle. It's also posted in the syllabus, so make sure you're obtaining that book because we do start using it right away. And that's it. Um, again, I know it's I know it's summer, so I am going to be flexible in opening you know modules up maybe a little earlier. And when you're creating your responses, be succinct. It, it might look like there's a a lot of reading to do and so forth uh, it, in that regard, but um, you know the reading is going to be very much contextual. It's about people, people with disabilities. One is Ro Vargo, who is going to fascinate you. A few videos that we watch and things like that. So, um, yeah, don't don't worry about that. But you are going to need the book, absolutely. So, again, my name is David. I will be your instructor, and you don't need to visit uh, class officially until May 16th and post your introduction. But uh, if you want to go in early, be my guest and take a tour around uh, Moodle. There's many tutorials within Viterbo also to help you to learn how to use Moodle. So, uh, thank you, and I look forward to working with you during this course.